Once upon a time, someone who's now become somewhat cliched in his openings said, if Google is to be believed, we're live. And so, welcome to the next installment, the next cycle through the series of four Game Masters for All for One Regime Diabolique. This particular session in our Lights in Darkness campaign is called Ties That Bind. And of course, we'll see through actual play if we actually get to the reason why the session is called Ties That Bind. We could wind up doing something completely different. When last we left our <clears throat> musketeers, they were somewhat downtrodden, feeling the sting of beat after a cruel and unexpected, very supernatural occurrence that it resulted in the death of an associate of Alphonse and the disappearance of a mysterious child, but not ones to be kept down by adversity, the musketeers have risen up again, summoned to duty over and over and over again to repel Spanish spies, to deal with the insulting forces of the Cardinal's brash and arrogant guards in the streets, and to protect innocence against the horrors that go bump in the night. And as our scene opens up, I'm pleased to surprise our band of musketeers with a pursuit. As their heavy boots slam into the highly polished marble floors of the king's palace, not too far from the River Sin, ahead of them, someone accused of being a Spanish spy is fleeing for his life just 20 feet ahead of them and heading for the grand staircase in the main entryway of the king's palace. The ceiling overhead is arched and is 30, 40 meters above them in the air. The <clears throat> echoes from their running feet bounce back wildly. Screams from behind them from the women's chambers where the spy was driven forth. And so I ask you gentlemen for initiative. A pull Everyone has a pull. five style. Are we start with five style? Yeah. You're starting with five style. Good All right. And I'm starting with a full and frosted icy mug of Coca-Cola. Diet root beer. <laughs> this broadcast is brought to you by A N W root beer. <laughs> I really wish A N W were here to sponsor this broadcast. So, yes. Oh, if you have any questions it. about the scene, if you have any questions about the scene, please let me know. You're in a very, very long and wide hallway built for processions to take you into uh, the receiving room and the ballroom for the king. At the end of this particular hallway is an enormous staircase to your left, which sweeps down in a gentle and widening curve into the main receiving area for the palace. There is, of course, a massive chandelier that that stairway yeah, yeah, yeah. curves around, right? So, and just a few meters ahead of you, you, the wall on your left will stop and become a hand railing which will then gracefully curl down around with the stairs. And that hand railing gives you several meters of open space, such as where the king could stand to survey people coming in uh, to the main room. Any other questions, please feel free to ask. You're in pursuit of someone wrapped up in <laughs> very, <laughs> very, very, very obvious dark clothes for creeping across the palace grounds in the night, but now inside the fully lit palace, they really stand out. All right. Well, my, uh, I, uh, well, I'll speak to the guy. No, 
whatever he, he so he can understand me or not i'm screaming continue like that and we'll hurt you stop <laughs> so, okay. so in, i the, intimidate oh okay well let's check initiative first let's see who gets to do what first I'm the spanish spy has an initiative of three i have three I have three. <laughs> I have two. And two. Are faster. Imagine, Run faster! Ah, it's the wound! <laughs> <laughs> Go! Catch him! Between Alphonse and Ivan, uh, who is more dexterous and agile? Uh, I probably. Three? I, I, have, I have three. Oh, you We're first, please, please. Well, words. Are traveling faster than a sword? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the the fetter instead of the sword. Who said that? Voltaire. <laughs> so I'm thinking uh, intimidate, and I have five success, man. My oh voice my is goodness. getting through, and I'm sure it's resonating. The the word hurt is in his head. <laughs> Resisted by this fellow's willpower. Oh my goodness. He falters. Or she falters. Throws a look over the shoulder as you get closer because your pursuit, you're gradually closing on them. Uh, they seem a little small for a man. Gets to the staircase. Pauses for a second and then leaps onto the wide handrail to slide down. You're now within three meters. But you, she Philippe? or he is opening up the distance rapidly by the slide. Fantastic. Not not caring for the for the cost and the possible uh, repercussions. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to start. <laughs> my my intention is to is to jump, maybe catch hold of the chandelier if if it's high enough, if it's low enough rather, and try to propel myself onto a spot on the handrail below where she where he or she is to try to oh my goodness cut him off of the pass. Sounds what fantastic. What could possibly go wrong? But but Philippe. It is important that you remember that early in the morning after your night shift ends, you have a duel. Okay, so I give myself a handicap by twisting my ankle. It's okay. It'll make it fair. <laughs> okay. Go for it. Leap into space, oh acrobatic one. Oh, I think, I think I'm swinging at six. Oh, oh, oh. All out. That sounds good. Uh, three. Three successes. Like at the average. Huh. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> so, so this is this is successful, my friend. How does that end up looking? I, well, I grab, grab hold of the chandelier. I gracefully, maybe not quite so gracefully, swing it across with the chandelier now swinging back and forth, hopefully. Not this type of glass or anything that might be incredibly expensive, and do a general nice backflip onto the hand railing, still sliding down. Probably, probably not stopping so good. <laughs> but I'm not in front of them. <laughs> but, but ahead of them, right? I have Which you sets now. All the palace dogs to barking. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, now the. The chandelier is many rings, of course, of candles carefully placed in in glass holders. And there's lots of glittery, dangly bits made out of glass, which all start to sound like the forest when it's raining. And Hi. ice underneath the Pont Neuf in the winter. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
you clear the mat, you leap from the balcony, grab the chandelier, which rocks and bits of glass fall and candles fall and you, in a cloud of smoke and flame, make it across, drop down onto the wide hand railing ahead of the Spanish spy and are now sliding toward the very big knob at the end of the railing. Uh, but first, looking up at the Spanish spy as they are coming down feet first toward you. Yes, I'm going to catch them. Jean-Marie. Jean-Marie is uh, slowed, slowed down by uh, uh, an old wound. Uh, <laughs> Not so age, it, it, surely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he start, he, he's starting to walk instead of uh, running, and he, he decides to uh, stay at top of the, the stairs, uh, keeping a, a good vantage point uh, towards the spy. He draws out his, uh, his uh, pistol, his favorite pistol, he put the pistol into his arm, <laughs> and he carefully aim at a, at you know the the railway, and he's yeah. trying to to aim at a specific part of the railway, waiting for the spy to slide on it, and he will try to uh, nice. shoot the railway to disarticulate or or move the thing to make the the spy fall maybe. Right. He would try. Not he would try. They'll try. Okay. So I hit. So yeah. between between Philippe and and the spy. Yeah. And if it's a very long railway, I, I'm I'm willing to wait to aim yes. for for a round. So we'll re we'll return to you after some seconds pass. So we're back to we're back to Breeze Cour, who has definitely had an effect on the spy. They. They are nervous, making mistakes, but still trying to get away. <laughs> how, how that's going to work now is anyone's guess between the rock and the firing place. But uh... Okay. Uh, well, I, I do sense that Jean-Marie is aiming, but I'm not sure if it's me or... <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, I do something very bold. I do throw myself in the stairs to roll on tempting. their... Oh, I have to... to, to, <laughs> to I, well, I, I just... Are they all on the railways? Well, all the rail or there are spies on the stairs simply? The, the one spy is sliding down the curved handrail. Okay. It's very wide. It's almost as wide as, as the body, right? And... Uh, now Philippe has landed and is sliding on the down the handrail. He's about halfway down. The spy is maybe one quarter of the way down, <laughs> and and Jean Marie is tracking. Okay, okay, <laughs> so, <a shot. laughs> okay. Uh, well, I do uh, go on the other rail just to be sure uh, Jean Marie has a clear shot and still say. Hey, look, the king's there, and I'm pointing another direction just to have him. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's so used to disbelieving everything that comes out of Breeze Corps' mouth, so we'll just have the spy be affected by this ruse if it works. <laughs> All right, I have nine dice and con. All right, well, let's just... <laughs> you can go for it if you like. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've rolled four. <laughs> It's like, look, Elvis! <laughs> look, the king! <laughs> right. I'm guessing he's coming for the king. <laughs> so here he is. And I'm pointing towards a, a you know, a, a, a steward or something. <laughs> <laughs> right, because far across the, the opening lobby area, right, of the highly polished floor at the base of the stairs, for another 20 or 30 meters, there's just open space of, of beautifully clean floor. And then there's the main entry doors. And there, of course, there are more musketeers oh. on duty. And then there's the house, the, the porters and the valets who would, who would bring guests, even at this strange hour of the night, uh, to wherever they need to go within the palace. So this, this spy's choice of this exit route is 
is frankly insane. There's no way out here. Even if they escape you, they run right into the hands of you know the first floor guards who are now, of course, all alerted. And, and once once the pistol shot goes off, are, are certainly going to be aware of something. But the the clattering of the of the chandelier is 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 alert enough. So uh, they're they're heading into that world of hurt that that Francois mentioned or that Brisecour mentioned. So the king. So yeah, sliding yeah. down this this railing takes some skill and acrobatics. And at the mention of the king, the spy loses control and is now falling toward the floor. <laughs> like cranks their head to see where the king is, and whoa, <laughs> over they go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip over to Jean Marie. Uh, you are aiming at the the handrail, uh, saving yeah. your turn from yeah. last round. Uh, I'll give you a chance to correct that if you want to to blow the spy away as they fall or or change your target. Oh no, I, I I'm just looking at my pistol and go. Hmm, I just save a bullet. <laughs> I, I turn, <laughs> I turn around work of reloading. <laughs> And I turn around okay. saying, the king saved you a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> but was it a okay, silver so, bullet? <laughs> <laughs> was it or was it not? Until it's fired, would anybody know? The uh, Philippe, you're heading toward the end of the railing at high speed. <laughs> the end of the railing has a large marble ball at the end. Yes, well, fortunately for me, Briscoe yelled the king. I rolled fewer successes on my willpower than his con roll. <laughs> so I looked, your majesty, where? And I noticed the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I put my head back. I noticed the spy falling off. And so I leap and try to catch the spy and acrobatically roll to, just in case the king happens to be there and watching, I want to catch the spy. But I also realized I don't want to hit that at a high velocity. So I'd rather hit the stairs. <laughs> good good plan. All right, give it a try. You're not going to fall far oh. enough to injure yourself. You're just going to be going off the side of the, the railing and down to the main floor. If you land on the spy, you know, it'll be very soft and comfortable, I'm sure. Right, okay. Well, I'm going to roll, I guess, acrobatics, I suppose. Oh, I, You're gonna I, need, I got a break fall, too. It'll be great. You're going to need three successes. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's go wrong. I got four. All right. Right on. Okay. So you catch the spy and ride them down to the cold marble floor. <laughs> Bumping on the steps. Great. Jean-Marie, from your vantage point, I would like from you a perception check. Yes. Let's use it. A blue dice, uh, two successes. All right. The two guards at the door, they're dressed in musketeers' uniforms. There are no musketeers you have ever seen. Hmm. Are they, like, right um, below me, or are they... They're, like a they're way across the this opening lobby at the main doors. They're just, they're there. This is a terrible duty for any musketeer to have to do, to stand there at the doors all night long, not patrolling, right? Just standing at the doors. Um, but these, you've never seen these men before and that's impossible. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fling my Kazakh into the air to make, to make space for my gun, I will uh, raise my hand into the air and I will shoot at the sky. And I will. The ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so high that it's the sky. <laughs> That's right. At an angle, at the sky. <laughs> the point is, I'm going to point my finger <laughs> toward those two guys and I'll just scream with 
with the intention of revealing their treachery to everyone and say, Hey, you are no musketeers. Right on. Imposter. So I want to That's intimidate great. them and just make, they, make them shake in their, their boots. All right. So they look up, right? Gunfire, incredibly loud, echoes. No one's going to miss the, the painted ceiling. Doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> the, the painting of Bacchus now has a, a neat hole drilled in its forehead. <laughs> I could have shut just between his leg. <laughs> and the, the two, the two imposter musketeers in the doorway, they, they, they freeze in that way. You know, that deer in the headlights, uh, I've been revealed panic kind of way. They, they lock up. They're no fighting men. Uh, they didn't expect to be caught. So they see their, their hands clench. Uh, and when I see their eyes, I draw my, my Josephine and I start running after them. Down the stairs? Yes. Not down the, not, not, not down the handrail. Okay, down the stairs. Yeah. Friend, uh, <laughs> Alphonse, please go. Well, uh, seeing the, uh, well, following the motion of Jean-Marie, I'll do the same. I'll undraw my sword. And I say, "Who's that? This imposter? You are imposters." <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and I'm, they're not I'm, even I'm, trying to deny it. Well, I, I'm I'm going side by side with Jean Marie towards uh, the, those guys. Hey, Blisker, did you know it was so easy to to steal some Kazakh? <laughs> well, no. I will check that out. We'll lock the room of the Kazakh after that. Maybe if our clothes were, were not so easy to mimic with cheap fabric. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, ta I'm taking the right. Take the left. Yeah, I'm taking the left. This is a very long staircase. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> long conversation. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm betting to Louis that I'm, I'm, I'm taking mine down before you. Well, at least mine will live long enough to see some of my dance move before hitting, like my school taught me. You're quite right. Mine might not survive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Philippe, you landed on top of the spy. And now that you've done so, this is definitely not a man. No, oh, this is great. I haven't been this close to a woman in God knows how long. <laughs> <laughs> but as I hear the gunshot, I look up, I see, I see the damage to Bacchus. I smile and realize nobody's going to care about a couple misplaced candles and broken parts of a chandelier now. <laughs> <laughs> so I look up, I look up in some race and say, "Merci, mon ami." <laughs> All around you are those 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 broken pieces of of glass, and those those candles are are rolling everywhere, spattering wax across the perfectly clean floor. And the the spy is face down trying to get up under your weight. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna grapple this person, try to stand up and bring them bring them to their uh, to my feet. So uh, Okay. The floor is extremely slippery. Eh, no matter. <laughs> All right. So what do I take any sort of penalty as I attempt to grapple and, and stand up? You do. You're going to take a two die penalty. All righty. And to, of course, secure them, you're going to need to beat their strength. And if you want to immobilize them, you're going to have to double it. Right on. Okay. I, I have six in grappling right off the bat. So I'm taking a two die penalty. I need to use two style. Ooh. So I'm going to go back with this. So ah, I really want to, uh... Style for the chandelier. <laughs> Oh, oh well, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, so I use six dice. I hope it's best. And the dice gods hate me because I got a one. Oh. So it's very slippery. So and that's that is the problem, right? You've you've got a good hold on them. You leapt on them from above. You've got a good hold. They're trying to get to their feet. You're trying to get 
but neither one of you can properly resist each other because of the highly waxed floor. So you're both standing, but nobody is immobilized. You have a grip on them and they are turning and pulling, trying to get away, right? So you're not in a position to control their body, but you are in a great position to see them draw a knife with both hands. Ah, man. <laughs> Phenomenal. Breeze Cook. Again? Again? You get to the bottom of the stairs ahead of Jean Marie because you were on the stairs first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, the, the two men who've been called out had frozen in their tracks the gunshot and being called out suddenly and the musketeers falling from the sky and raining of raining fire and, and whatnot. <laughs> so they've been standing there just looking. And now finally they, they recover their senses and one of them is fumbling for his sword. And the other one is rushing toward the bottom of the stairs and he's picking up, a chair that is sitting there by the front door. Hey, Looking like he's going to use the chair as a weapon. Okay. He, there will be a chair at me. Well, yep. If a I, well, big, I, I, padded red velvet kind of chair. This is King's property, and I, I will disarm the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so disarm I have four it's not my best I will try to take uh, well two style points on that cool <laughs> <laughs> a chandelier a chair a painting yeah. of Lord Bacchus <laughs> well it's it uh, raising <laughs> I got the I chair got, becomes important <laughs> I, I got a four oh, to the bar Louis XIII chair <laughs> four Okay. Yeah, I have four, you know, with my, my my blade goes through some of the uh, bad. Uh, I don't. How do you call that? The stuffing. Yeah, the stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> and it ripped off. You you see all the all the stuffing going everywhere. The the feathers. <laughs> King's <Okay>. property. <laughs> <laughs> and and he flinches, right? Like any any real trained warrior, any real Fencer would have been able to hang on to the chair, but just the the blade coming at him or something. He's like ah, and then you know, all the stuffing flies everywhere, and he's standing right there in front of of well, Breeze Coors' naked my, blade. Yeah, well, uh, my blade comes back, and I'm pointing him like that on right. your knees. Okay. At which point, Jean Marie hits the bottom of the stairs, and his opponent is the one who is trying to draw his sword. Philippe, I just did France a favor. Lord Beckus needed a new paint coat. <laughs> yeah, well, Louis must have needed a new chair. <laughs> okay, le less talking. <laughs> <laughs> you started it. <laughs> so uh, the, um, the other spies uh, or other he's, fake musketeers he's drawn his uh, sword he's drawing his sword okay uh, i'll go for his his uh, sword hand i'm gonna tap the the hand with my josephine okay called shot oh yeah it's a big arm movement he has to make very predictable uh just minus two minus two you're not trying to do damage so just minus no. two I'm going to use two style to compensate. Nice. And the roll. That's <laughs> five successes. <laughs> it's a, a three on the blue. Oh, yes. I love the blue die. All right. Yes. Well, how would you react? You've just been slapped across the knuckles, right? And you're terrified already. What happens? Well, he's dropping his sword, probably grabbing his hand in the, in pain. And as he as he uh, go forward, uh, something cold 
meets <laughs> his, his throat, and there's a musketeer just pointing at his throat. Surrender now. All right. You're under royal arrest. And it's at this, this point that the two of you, Brisecour and Jean-Marie, you recognize these two men. You have seen them before. They work in the palace somewhere, like in the kitchens or somewhere in the back. They're not hey. Spaniards. Hey, I know your face. What are you doing in the musketeer's uniform? Speak now! He's totally terrified. But we'll cut to Philippe and the double knife wielding Spanish <laughs> spy woman <laughs> in her dark clothes who you've got her clothing from behind. She's drawn two knives and is turning around, obviously to attack your underarm with a cruel double slash. Uh, well, not having a chair within reach, I'm going to have to. Uh, there's no time for the rapier, so I'm going to pull out the the mangosh and make it a mandrot <laughs> and try to uh, try to bury as best I can. Okay, yeah. beware, ladies and dark. Yeah. What happened last time, huh? Yeah, but I'm very, I'm very scared of women. I'm, yeah, I'm way, way for a chair leg or something to the head. <laughs> okay. So, defend yourself, young man. That I will. I am going, going, going to parry her blows. Okay. Five successes. Ooh, that would be seven, but I am not reposting. Right. Okay. So the first slash and the second slash are blocked by arm and mendroit. <laughs> and uh, you can hear her swear softly under her breath. Spanish. Such talk from a lady. <laughs> in, sp in Spanish, yeah. <laughs> the sweet sounds of Spanish. Cursing. Next. Hey. That was Who's your next? defensive action. You're at the top of the initiative. It's you again. Oh, my attention. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I was just, you know, I haven't been sworn out by a woman in a long time. I haven't, haven't been on top of a woman in a long time. You know, you can, you can take shock as an action if you like and just stand there. She'll be happy no, to absolutely attack not. again. Absolutely not. I'm going to try to disarm her. Woo. I'm going to try to disarm her. Rem rem remembering what what Renard has taught me about this, bring the full full uh, full training of my school to bear. I will attempt to disarm with uh, three successes. Oh, pretty good. Not enough. But is it good enough? Not good Not enough. enough. Right, so she retains her grip. And in order to disarm her, you needed to let her go. So you're now too, you're separated in space. Right. I'm desperately trying to maintain my footing on the incredibly polished floor. And, and so is she. So she's clearly considering how to escape, and there's nowhere. Right. You can hear other musketeers running uh, towards your location. They'll be here any second now. The musketeers outside on duty from the other side of the the entry doors they've opened the doors they're coming in they, she has nowhere to go and so she reverses her grip on the blades and plunges them into her heart ah <laughs> oh. <laughs> now i just i just dropped my 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 blade i've never seen anything like that she drops to her knees. She looks up into your eyes, Philippe, and only you can hear her whisper, for France. And she expires, and her beautiful auburn hair spills out across the floor. Well, I drop my, I drop my blade. I, I just kind of sink to my knees and just kind of look at her flabbergasted. Oh, I turn around to look a little terrified, and I look at the guy. What do you know about that? 
please. Please, Tell they, me. For they forced me. Yeah, ooh. Oh, they... key. Not, please, not here. They'll see. Uh, they'll see. Just, there's someone looking at us right now. Isn't that, isn't it? <laughs> he looks, he looks even more terrified. <gasps> please. He drops to his knees. Jean-Marie's opponent drops to his knees as ordered. And, and they're just, they're begging you to, <laughs> basically shut up <laughs> stop <laughs> i grab mine by the collar and and drag him like a doll <laughs> kicking him in the in, into the ass <laughs> other musketeers oh, no. arrive looking for a report uh, i'm looking I, i'm still looking my uh, my captive in the eyes au nom de la france vous allez parler you will talk and I really try to, to, to press the citron, the, the, the lemon. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe we should do this, do, do this inside. On your, on your foot. That's a, yeah, let's do that. So you get them up and you drag them into the guard room, private place only the musketeers go when changing shifts and receiving their duty assignments at the palace. And they are clearly terrified. Uh, I mean, this allying with a, with a Spanish spy, if that is exactly what happened, uh, this, is, this is treason, this is death. Right? They are terrified, but they seem to be more terrified that, of someone else. I think we should uh, proceed like in any French movie and the interrogation is started as we enter the room and throw the guys into the chairs and then start screaming after them right now. <laughs> so you're going to you're going to try to go for intimidation to break to oh, break through. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'll support each other with that. Well, oh, your, yes. your combined force of personality, unless you really let, let, want to roll for it, there's really let, no let, need let, not to take the average. <laughs> let me say this, Anthony. There is no good cup in this scenario. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> bad, bad cup and worse cup? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm the worst. <laughs> You're not so bad. Now, Philippe, are you going to stay with the body until that is addressed, or are you going to go with, with these guys? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm staying with the body. Philippe is just starts crying. He just has no idea what just, you know. His sister kind of, kind of picks her up, you know, look, looks at her, just, just says, why? And just completely, he's, yeah, he's in shock. One more detail as you pick her up, the, the mask that's covering her face slips aside, and she is beautiful, or she was. Even worse. So, in the guard room, you begin to brutalize yeah. the two men. The memory comes slowly once you can see them uh, out of the context of their uniform and the, the grand entryway of the palace. Once you can see them here in the back where common people work, <laughs> they both uh, work in the kitchens. Uh, not as cooks or, or anything specialized like that. They are simply runners. Uh, they deliver uh, whatever is needed to whoever from the kitchen to elsewhere in the palace. So they have access through the secret passageways and through the normal passageways anywhere they want to go in the palace. A quick search of this very room reveals where the uniforms came from. And being able to look at them closely you see that they're mismatched. Of course, they don't fit. Um, so a, a damaged cloak, hastily repaired, uh, bloodied uh, pants, hastily cleaned, all assembled to make a musketeer's uniform from parts left in the guardroom. Now, under your brutal assault, 
they they soon they, they are called bath in in french it's, it's just a little ruffling and you know <laughs> tap sur la gueule quoi <laughs> yeah. yeah i look at that mine c'est une honte it's a shame you're it's a really, shame of france it's really a shame to the uniform you, you better start talking right now who gave you this order to to insult the uniform and the king so the first man the man that uh, jean marie threatened he breaks down into tears and the only word that you can understand that he says is my babies my babies over and over again and the man who threatened uh Brice Court with the chair and not with his blade. He's a little more understandable. And he quickly reveals that they were offered bribes, which they refused. And then their families were taken. They only received information uh, from whispers in the shadows they claim to have never seen the face but they know it was a woman knowing the value of family i will stop my assault since the truth is out now and i will just uh, step back and leave uh, briscar deal with it Cross my arm and judge. <laughs> <laughs> judge. <laughs> Donk. So, um, your family is being taken hostage, as I understand. Yes, sir. We had no choice. But they swore to us that that the king would not be harmed. The king will not be armed. I'm a, little wor I'm, a little, I'm a little worried about your family. How can you be sure they're telling you the truth about your family? Well, now his face crumbles into tears and he's sobbing. And he has well, no answer for you. Well, if some enemies of the king is taking your family hostage, we will track them down. Any any information you could give us about this hooded, mysterious woman? Any signs, any colors, any jewelry? No, but I can tell you where we met her. That's a start. Yeah, let's so start we with met that. Her. We, we met her at, and he names a, a very cheap bar or, or public house. Uh, it has this horrible sign out front that's supposed to be a rooster, you know, crowing at the sun. Uh, but the sign was all painted red, and someone at some point in history had broken the thing's neck. Uh, so... There's the, the body of the, the rooster straining upward, but the, the neck is hanging at a, at a funny angle because oh, the yeah, sign is the, painted red. The headless rooster, yeah, yeah. There you the go. <laughs> Isn't that your underground brisket? <laughs> oh, well, some, I have rendezvous once in a while at Le Cotte qui sans tête. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Le Cotte qui sans tête. <laughs> The rooster <laughs> with no head. <laughs> oh, I got that one. I got that. <laughs> so it's it's full of fleas. The the floor is is straw. It's very low. They use the worst kind of tallow candle, you know, fat made candle. So it's always smoky in the air. It's kind of greasy. Uh, but the the waitresses are friendly, and the patrons don't pay anybody any attention money as long as you can pay or if there's at least a chance that you can pay soon no one will bother you there okay, uh, 
Well, I think we should act fast. You know, there's a family and the balance. I'll, I'll turn to Prince uh, Gar and, and uh, you know, if she's smart enough, she she's not st staying there. You know, it might work to check it out, but I'm not sure if we'll ever find her because if she's really up to some conspiracy against the king she might be more prudent than that uh, well that's what i feel but it's, it's at least somewhere to start but we can check other ways we can check other clues if we we might uh, let's see what philip has uh and it seems now, to me that it's it's a double duty we must unfoil this conspiracy against the king, but also find maybe the families of these men. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. Gentlemen, consider yourself under the protection of the musketeers. I'll instruct them how to go to the, the, the musketeers barrack and, and Fill in a report for us, and we'll go to the uh, Le Coq Sans Tête. Okay. Well, we can ask There's some fellow musketeers to, to, to accompany them. There's one Just more detail. As you know, they're, the uniform is being removed from them, and their clothes are being returned <clears throat> to them because no one's going to let them continue to wear. You know, no. the uniform of the, of the king's elite guard. Uh, <laughs> The, the man with who had used the, the chair, he presents you with this very small leather bag, which you can hear the clink of coins inside, right? And he says, she gave us this to use uh, as, as bribes so that we could get the uniforms and, and, uh, and access, right? What kind of coins? Yeah. I'm just checking they, the coins just quickly. The, the coins are Spanish gold. <laughs> they are, so they're very easily spotted, but there's there's something else. There is a an almost reddish glint to the gold. The, the gold itself, it seems, almost has a, a, a bloody color to it under the candlelight. Just a second, I'm going to have to deal with that noise. The back. <laughs> well, this is a really what? blood money. Oh. Yes. Maybe we'll we'll have to. Uh, yeah, we're still outside crying. For real? No, he's uh, not crying. He's a Renoir fencer. He's, he's he's tougher than that. <laughs> well, they see the uh, well. I myself so we'll... also practice the Renoir, but I'm not a member of the salon. He no, but the yeah, better than me. He, yeah, he's shaken. You know, he just saw a woman kill herself. Well, this is not our fir our first brush with death. No, but suicide. It's not it, it, well. It, it's ugly. Sit yeah, I guess. I guess it's it's a somber. Uh, yes. I've seen worse. No, let's check this out. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go check him out. I right. forget sometimes that he's just a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the. The main area, the main receiving area of the palace, porters and, and people, the, the, the king's physician, they all come and very quickly everything's being cleaned up. There's some comments you can hear in the background like, what happened to the chandelier? And uh, <laughs> what happened to the chair? <laughs> and, and already a completely false story is being created. Uh, the servants are whispering to each other how the spy leapt in desperation from the balcony, grabbed the chandelier, swung across, landed on the chair. <laughs> and uh, nobody so far has noticed the ceiling. 
might be long for this one. <laughs> within within moments, all traces of of the combat have been erased. Right, the the chandelier has been lowered, reassembled. The candles lit. It's been raised. The blood has been cleared away. The chair has been replaced, and it's like nothing ever happened except for the smell of gunpowder in the air. Oh, and even great. that. Someone is walking through with a, a large feather scented with perfume, trying to clear the air. Mm. The body's been taken to the physician's chambers, and I presume that Philippe is following? He has, yeah. And he, as, as they, right when they were coming to you know, take her body away, he takes out his, his, uh, his uh, knife and just cuts off a lock of her hair. Just a little bit. All right. And he follows, and he just, he's okay. kind of just in shock still, just wondering. Okay. So the, the doctor begins to examine and, uh, and asks, who killed this woman? She, she killed herself. I was trying to disarm her, and she plunged the knives into her own heart. He grips you on the shoulder and says, are you all right? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it. I've seen, I've seen men die. I've, I've killed men, but I've never seen a woman do that. Never seen a man do that. Do you know who she is? No, I have no idea. I... So he pulls her, pulls her gloves off and, you know, starts looking at, the, the wound and fully reveals her face and to the side moves the hair back and just here exposes what looks like a brand hmm. what is that well it's hard to say. It's so old that the, you know, the, the burn mark, the, the scar tissue has, has grown or moved or shifted. But it looks like something with wings. The wings maybe are, are held up. And the head of the creature is, is off to the side like this. So it'd be something you would put on a on a signet ring maybe and you've seen many coats of arms of noble families with such a mark although no one would brand it into their skin if she had been a criminal the fleur de lis would be burned into the back of her neck or tattooed on her neck but this seems more like a symbol of property and in some way resembles flame or perhaps a bird it's curious curious i do not understand i do not understand so i finally finally walk out once i realize that there's nothing else to find out but i'm just kind of walking in a daze out of the out of the, the physician's office okay really with no no goal or direction of mine. I'm just completely shaken by the event. All right. The other two are on their way out, duty over, and heading for somewhere. And you cross paths, coincidentally. Uh. So, Philippe, how are you holding up? Okay, I've just never seen anything like that. And she looked at me right, right. What after she, she thrust the blades into her chest and she said, "For France." That's nonsense. Nobody she just would do that. For France, you know, we've seen things strange into the night. Maybe it's one of of these occult phenomena. You know, maybe possession. 
Maybe. Right? I don't know. She seemed – she did not seem possessed. But then again, I do not know. But she had a brand on her neck. No. It was really? curious creatures with wings up and it had inside. Of her infernal allegiance. But, you know, the devil works subtle ways. People might look normal to you, but they might be influenced. She did not look normal, Jean-Marie. She looked beautiful. Nobody mm. in their right mind would drive metal to their heart, with, at least not without hesitating a little bit. Uh, you say she had a brand. Yeah, can, yes, it was. Can you, just, can you describe the brand? Yes, it was. It was like a creature with wings and, and, and a head turned like this, like wings up, like uh, mm. wings. I couldn't say it was old. It was old. The doctor uh, said maybe. it was done when she was much younger, so it, it, it was not clear. It could be several of minor secret society and clubs in Paris. Uh, I'd, have, well, I'd have to check. I want to see that too. I'm going straight to uh, where the where body is. Where is Martin when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> Martin was supposed to do duty tonight, but had to ask Jean-Marie to replace him because he had been yeah. summoned to the Cardinal's palace. Ah. Yeah, promotion. <laughs> You'll be missing all the fun. So we're we're heading to the uh, this sleazy tavern, Le Coq Sans Tête. Maybe you you've heard Le of Coq the place. Sans tête. Like. Yeah, basically this uh, this uh, mysterious woman hired these uh, these two cuisiniers, these two cooks, to impersonate musketeers because their family have been uh, have been taken so it's not it's not of their fault but clearly there's a little bit of conspiracy against the king uh, she said something about that the king would not be hurt and that is never good you know so uh, I'm not hoping to find that woman there if she if she's any smart she's not staying there but we'll we'll have a look do you want to come or do you want to chill here and relax and you can do that if you want. I look quizzically at Jean Marie. Chill? <laughs> yeah, it's not it's 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 not one of them young talks. <laughs> oh old man, old man. You I'm trying to be I'm trying to be cool. You know? <laughs> for the first time, for the first time. Philippe cracks and cracks a bit of a grin, puts his hands on his own raised shoulders, like, just, just speak your age, talk your age. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll go. To, I'll go to the cocksanth. But you would not find a woman, a woman like this one in the cocksanth. She was beautiful. I do not understand. Please. Why would she act that way? We'll have a look. Mm -hmm. Just for. I don't know. Just for logic, just to be sure that she's not there. If she's stupid enough, we will get fleas. You know that. And even then, and even then, we we, we don't have any description of her. So it, I I feel part of me think it's a waste of time. But she speaks Spanish. Yeah. So Probably Jean -Marie, you always think everything is a waste of time. I I, pr I produce one of the the coins. She paid with this a Spanish coin, and look at the color. It's uh, special. I've never seen a coin like this. Yeah. Just before we go, I want to see the neck of the spy we followed. I'm okay. going to join you at the Cote Santé. I know the place. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. I have streetwise up six. Yep. <laughs> I'd, ra I'd rather enter before you, please, go. <laughs> all right. You'll draw all the attention to us. Let's go, Philippe. Right, so, Philippe and Wherever Jean Marie. Wherever I go, I draw the attention. <laughs> Philippe and Jean Marie leave the palace to head for the public house, Le Coq Santet, and Brice Cour 
goes back to the physician's chambers. So we'll do Breeze Core first. And as you enter the physician's rooms, this is where he has his office. He would not treat the king here or anything like that. It's just a private chamber and he has uh, you know, a small bed to examine normal patients. Uh, the doctor, the physician is lying on the floor and struck down like you know his, his arms are just up and there's a, a bloody mark on his temple he's still breathing but he's been knocked unconscious and i guess the body's not there anymore you are a wise wise Ooh. man <laughs> his, but I, her clothing is still here okay they, you know, the uh, dark the dark clothes that you recognize hmm. uh any other exits that i can spot a window his office is on the ground floor okay after checking out that the physician is still breathing i do rush myself at the window and i try to search the night okay it's it's well lit the musketeers know their duty right okay. you can see a patrol of musketeers moving across your field of view but no sign of, of someone escaping. Hey, the window who? is maybe just a little too small for you, but a woman could possibly get through it. But she would have to be very, very skilled not to disrupt all of the, the bottles and whatnot on display on the doctor's desk under the window. Uh, I'm uh, I'm the shouting at the musketeers that I see. Hey, les amis! Hey, vous! You! Oui. <laughs> There's a yelling match starts. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's, well, it's Alphonse, you know. Oh, hello! <laughs> Who? <laughs> Hurry! You only check. know him by his nickname. <laughs> Pass the word. Someone is fleeing with a dead body. So the alarm uh, is sounded again, and uh, and the palace grounds, uh, a search begins, led by Alphonse. You are in charge. Yes, I will take charge of this. We'll find it. I, I can assure you. Uh, well, the first of all, uh, you know, looking down from the window. Uh, I try to check out if there are traces of someone who have fallen there or... Right. Uh, yes, all around the, the base of the back of the palace, there's, there's decorative plants. Right? Uh, not big enough for someone to hide in because the musketeers would not allow such a thing, right? Uh, but just to make it difficult to to be at the bottom, the base of the wall, to make it harder to climb up, as uh, Philippe discovered not too long ago. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> but it makes it it's it's soft if you happen to fall. <laughs> yep. uh, so in the darkness, looking down from the window, there's there's nothing obvious, right? And then there's walkway, right? And then lawns and things. So. Uh, with enough light, if someone fled across the, the the back lawn, it's possible, maybe that there you'd be able to find a trail. Okay. Well, I do get back uh, to uh, the main hall, trying to gather musketeers, uh, send some people, take care of the physician, and trying to gather a thing and dispatch uh, teams to make the search. Sure. And we'll cut now to the arrival at the headless rooster. Um, which is a very, 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 uh, it's in a, a terrible part of town. Uh, only your uniform probably prevents you from being molested on the way there. And in there, one of the first things you notice is what's obviously supposed to be a secret meeting with Cardinal's guards at the back. I'm not there. 
Now, this place is full of dark corners and posts holding up the, the weak ceiling, posts that have been added later, which breaks up the flow of the room, makes it hard to see the whole room. He's very cheap, so the, the lights, like I mentioned before, are, are small. They make them themselves, and they just sit on the tables. So it's, it's very easy to get a, a dark corner, and I guess I'll have to wait for the return of Jean-Marie. Welcome back. Oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. Um, so this this place is is full of just these small pools of light. The the light sources are very small, like tea lights, sitting on the actual tables. So there's the the bar is mostly dark, and the the service is of the waitress coming in and out of the the tap room, and uh, it's not like there's a bar where people leaning up against the bar, talking to the, the bartender. And uh, seating, oddly, seating is arranged by the waitresses, right? You come in and stand there trying to figure out where there's a place to sit, and a waitress would come to you and, and take you somewhere empty, uh, which makes it an ideal spot to meet uh, secretly. But if you're wearing bright red, uh, you tend to stand out like the Cardinals guards that you can see off to your right, deep in the in the darkness and the gloom of the bar. And a waitress, very friendly looking, heavy set waitress with a scrubbed clean face, but a lot of sweat on her brow, just carrying this huge tray of of leather tankards of, of ale. Uh, says, how many? Two, please. Mm. Uh, Follow. Uh, <laughs> Wait a moment, madame. She gives you that look like, all right. <laughs> if you waste my time. We're, not, we're, <laughs> we're, uh, we're on duty, madame. We're here for questioning who would be your... Um, could you point us to your staff? People who are taking maybe rent or doing table she's already she's already started to move okay <laughs> and she takes you near to the tap room where a very very heavy set not really fat but no longer muscular older man is uh, is collecting the money from the waitresses and and passing out the drinks and uh, he smiles when he sees you and says, Oh, I am blessed by the great protection of the most powerful men in France tonight, the King's Musketeers and the Cardinal's Guard. If you break anything, I'll expect the King to pay for it. I look him square into his little pig eyes and I drop the, the, the Spanish coin heavily on this table in front of him. And I just say, ever seen any one of those? So very, very delicately, you know, like a like a musician or a surgeon, he opens the bag, right, and takes out one coin without like touching the rest of the bag, and he looks at it, and he goes, "Why do you want to know, musketeer?" I'll try to grab him by the collar and bring it over the, <laughs> over his desk. <laughs> All hope of of having fun banter with the musketeer and maybe getting some money obviously leaves his face. <laughs> and he realizes he's messing with the wrong man. <laughs> That's probably Philip saw that coming. <laughs> He goes, okay, oh, no, okay, no, okay, no. okay, okay, okay. You can't, it's like he's trying to adjust his clothes. You can't blame a man for trying to feed his family. This is, it's a very important time right now. Are there any bottles on this table? <laughs> he had the drinks. Didn't uh, he they're, they're, they're behind him, yeah. He, uh, he's got these next to this big wooden keg for the ale. It's very few people in here can actually afford a bottle. <laughs> 
It's a no choice of word, family. There's two men who have seen their entire family kidnapped. And the woman who did that paid with one of these coins. You so know yeah, her. a man she should knows. feed his family. Indeed, you should pay respect to these family and tell me what, what you know about these coins. He obviously knows what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know where they are. But I, I can tell you one thing. Their meeting, it was a woman who hired them. And she spoke French. But not like she learned it in a Spanish school, if you know what I mean. Hmm. My ears and I've seen this. Eyes. I've seen this gold before. And I'll tell you for free, so that you know that I am a loyal Frenchman. I loose, loosen up a bit. This is, he leans in really, really important. close, drops his voice, says, it was many years ago, many, many years ago, and there were musketeers much like you who came, and they, they found a group of men, It turned out to be a very large group of men who, you know, he looks left, he looks right, he leans in, he goes, worship the devil. And they wanted to kill the king. And they used gold like this. But I have to warn you, musketeer, I never saw those musketeers again. He crosses himself. Thank you for the tip. Any any hints where these guys meet? There's there's an old old public house like this. You might be old enough to remember it, it was called the White Horse. It's just a few blocks from here to the north. It burned down maybe four or five years ago. But you don't sound like you're from Paris. Where are you from? Orléans? I'm from Orléans indeed. Oh. When did you come to the city? Not, not longer than three years ago. So it burned down before your time. Maybe you did not know these men, but if you ask about them, Maybe you'll be able to learn more about their story. But the white horse was where they went. And no one saw them again. I thank you very much in the name of the king. And from a loyal Frenchman to another. And I shake his hand. Shakes it back. And then he very carefully puts the coin back in the bag. And you'd expect a guy like this to try and keep the gold, but he slides it back across the table to you. Yeah. He knows those are cursed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> I look, I, I point I point at a bottle. I, I just grab a bottle, throw some coins down at him for the bottle. And I think for a second, I take another coin out, one of my last coins from my purse and said, uh, the king wishes to put the uh, the tet back on the cock. <laughs> <laughs> That's a style. <laughs> totally. Totally a style. All right. <laughs> now, speaking of style, showing mm. a lack of it, the, the Cardinal's Guard, of course, are 
unable to resist making comments about you. This would be a good time to ask, who is my duel with? <laughs> not, not with a Cardinal's Guard, unfortunately. Ah, excellent. Okay, excellent. Okay. Interestingly, and well, we'll get to that in a second. That's quite all right. <laughs> Just... So, floating across the the murmured conversation in the bar, you hear, you know why the Musketeers are dressed in black. Now the the, the Musketeers who serve in the King's Palace. In, inside the, the, the palace, they wear black. The musketeers who serve outside wear blue. You know why the king's musketeers wear black? I was like, no, why? Because they're all pigs. They're so dirty, it's the only color that can hide their filth. Ha 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 ha. You know, yeah, I'm and thinking. The bar of goes completely silent, and everybody's yes. looking at you. I don't you know, even pay Philippe, attention to. Yeah. You know, Philippe. You know, Philippe. Look at this man's face. Try to remember it, and open a tab for him. <laughs> Sometimes you have to leave some pass through you. But remember them. The king is generous, and so are his men. Good night, sir. By Jim the way. Style. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I could recommend at least five taverns where we could have better wine. But I guess you don't make the money, right? <laughs> I go out. Leaving them speechless and embarrassed. <laughs> now. Philippe looks crestfallen because he wanted to bash the bottle over his head, but, but follows. <laughs> well, with a bottle, with a bottle. Just still drinking out of the bottle. Now it's getting so close to dawn. Philippe. It's getting close to dawn. And your your duel is, of course, at dawn. In a churchyard, a cemetery, pretty close, as usual, to the gate of St. Anthony on the south end of Paris. You don't have much time to get there, and Martin was supposed to be your second. Who knows when he'll come back from the Cardinal's Palace. One thing that's very famous about people who go to have some kind of meeting with the Cardinal is that they often have to wait for all the other people. And the rumor is that the Cardinal never sleeps. <laughs> you could be summoned to his, to his uh, private chambers at 3 o'clock in the morning to report something that you saw weeks beforehand. Right? Remember, the city of Paris is filled by, according to rumor, with the Cardinal's spies. He knows everything he sees everything. So Martin may not return in time to serve as your second for this duel. The duel itself is with the member of a rival fencing school who has been going around town insulting the Renoir Academy, saying it's an academy for cowards and thieves. for the honor of your school, and also because the man had the audacity to spill a drink on you at your favorite croissant shop and slap your face with a glove. Oh. A duel was set at a very specific time and place, very loudly, so that everyone would know. Of course, dueling is illegal. So it's happening much more often now than ever before. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. It's the French thing to do. Oh, look, I take another swig from the bottle. Jean-Marie, I, uh, I need a second. I have a duel I'm supposed to go to. A man has insulted our fine academy, and I require a second. And uh, Martin was supposed to be my second, but uh, 
I believe he will probably be in the Cardinals pass for for the next six weeks. <laughs> like everybody else summoned there. And uh, I, uh, he's not a Renoir anyway. He, uh... but, but, but Philippe, as you, as you know, I could have gone to the Salon many times. I, I know the Renoir from watching people and learnings and books and from paying a tutor here and there. But we're fighting the forces of darkness here. <laughs> I know. The king is in danger. We have a duty to, to the king. This man is the force of darkness. He insulted the academy. But, but the it, devil, the, the blood coins. The... <laughs> yeah, with you, it's always about the devil, always about the horns, always about the Spanish right, spies. Right. You just have to All stand right. there. It'll be a couple minutes. All right. And Philippe is getting loud and boisterous having having drank all right, all right. a bottle of wine. All right, all right. I'll be your second. But I challenge you to finish this fight in one move. <laughs> what kind of what kind of panache is that in one move? That is not even fair. It's the best panache of all. Wasn't there the Master Renoir himself who defeated two guys with one move? Come on. Yes. This is this is the style of Renoir fighting many opponents. But how do you have to do is harness that power and give it to one man just one time. We're on the clock here. We we have stuff to do. So I'm willing to go to, to be the bloody seconds to your duel, but yeah, you want to impress me, kid? Finish this in quick. Okay, you know what? I, I I accept your challenge. I accept your challenge. But if I cannot do it one move, you have to kill him. <laughs> I will. I, I will fall. I will take a dive. I will fall right down. No, you will finish this guy one move. You will. Regain your honor or something. You will save the school from burning up. And then we'll go on to our mission. Regain and my honor? When did I lose my honor? And, 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 and where is Briska? He, he would do uh -huh. a far better second than me. You know. Speaking of Briskur, as the argument follows the two musketeers through the streets... <laughs> <laughs> as the dawn slowly comes up over the the autumn cast Paris, as leaves blow and as the there's a thin scum of of morning ice or frost on glass and on the water, we turn to Brisecourt, who has been for the last several hours searching the palace grounds. Well, the musketeers finally have to admit that they cannot find any sign of someone breaking in. And they, of course, do not find the woman. But they do find that uh, one of the maids is complaining that her, her room was broken into and clothing is missing. OK. Well, just before getting there, while getting there, I have some guards with me, okay, following me, and I say, we must double the watch on the king's and the queen's room and their windows. You know, if someone can break in and out as easy as that, well, they can take out the king and the queen with the swift. So I'm going to see what the maids has to say. Okay. So the, the guards are doubled and... and the, the king's uh, advisors are alerted, and the cardinal sweeps over from the cardinal's palace uh, out of concern, and there's lots of interviews and high-level talks going on, which occasionally interrupts uh, what you're doing. But you get to the maid's chamber. Ah, you've been here before. <laughs> yes, sir. 
<laughs> oh yeah, it's kind uh, of a small room. The bed's the bed's very uncomfortable, but the occupant is very friendly. Uh, is she there? She's pretending not to know you. Voyons, Gertrude. <laughs> Gertrude, um, you. What happened? Well, as you know, with. I mean, as you might know, my shift ends with the dawn. Same shift schedule as the musketeers. And as I came back to my room, I noticed that my door, which was locked, was unlocked. And my, as she's pointing at her wardrobe, right, mm. which is very small. She obviously, I mean, she's a maid. She doesn't have many clothes other than her her proper uniform, her livery. Yeah. Uh, it has been broken open, and the uh, and there's a, an empty hook where some clothing would hang. What was the color of those clothings? Uh, blue, like my eyes. Mm. And uh, blue, okay. Uh, how many time passed be be between the moment you left your room and when you came back to see this? It, it's been all night. She, she works the, the nights, so uh, it would have yeah. been eight or more hours since she's been in this room. Okay, trying to, well, maybe try to find some clues looking at the wardrobe, looking at the bed, looking under the bed, just in case. Just in case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's no hidden lover in the room and uh, just her private things underneath the bed, you know, like shoe boxes and hat boxes and things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Ah. Aha. There is blood. Just Where? a few droplets and still fresh right there next to the bed where you would, it's a, such a small room. If you were to put on a lady's dress, you would have to stand here, right? Where your hands are as you're, you're lowering yourself down to look under the bed, right? Mm -hmm. And right there, there are small, fresh droplets of blood. Are you wounded, Jatrud? <laughs> no, why do you ask? I'm, I have the blood on my finger. I try to find if there's any other drips. You know, I'm looking out of the door, looking at the floor. Okay. So now that you have something to look for and light and associates, you are able to follow a trail. It's widely spaced, so it's slow moving. But from this room, you can follow the blood drips back to the doctor's office. And from this room, you can trace the blood drips right out the servant's door. Continue to follow. I have uh, I have some assistance with me, yeah? Yes. Follow, follow me, monsieur. Uh, we'll find who did this. Now... One thing that you know, especially one of the musketeers with you, uh, has, has some skill with this. The, the drips are growing farther and farther apart, which either indicates the person is moving faster or the blood is dripping more slowly. And once you get to the street with all of the mud and the muck and the crap, you're very likely to lose the trail and you might need dogs. Let's get some dogs and let's find someone dressed in blue. All right. Now the sun is coming up. Your shift is over. The, the musketeers are, are wanting to change the guard. There's there's briefing. Hunting dogs are, are ordered. It will be a while uh, before they arrive. But you're going to... You're going to keep going. And... Uh, Right now, looking for a woman in a blue dress. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Trying to find a woman in the blue dress or a man, whatever you know, someone in the blue dress. All right. And you mentioned you had an exceptional streetwise, did you not? Six. Woo. All right. So that makes you see the streets of Paris differently than other people. Mm -hmm. Right. And maybe put your your mind into the mind of someone who's trying to escape, but maybe thinks that they are, you know, disguised, well disguised. So where, as you exit the side of the king's palace, right, the south side of the king's palace, where would you go in the city of Paris to get away from here? Either in the river or uh, in some, uh, well, some between buildings or the roof. You know, there's many places uh, in right. the cart. I have many places to look for. Now, the, the uh, two younger musketeers who are with you are just looking at you, waiting for your decision. Okay, you. I'm pointing him. Go check the river. You. Try to check out the the roofs. I'll try the streets. <laughs> the musketeer is being sent to the roof. Looks really unhappy. Why couldn't I get to go to the river? <laughs> he says, yes, sir. <laughs> Starts to, to head up to the the rooftops of the, the neighboring buildings, which are quite far away from from the palace. And you head to the streets. Yeah. Okay. Trying to look all around. Trying to find, it's hard to do too much. The streets are too busy. Ah. Especially now, right? People are waking up. The merchants are opening. The, the carts are, are now heading toward, in toward the market, which is in the area of town where you are, right? Between the Cardinal's Palace and the, the King's Palace is the massive open-air market. All the carts are heading there from all directions. It's chaos. I uh, well, where can I find? Where would I go? There's so well. There are so many places to hide in Paris. Uh, I try to grab some people, maybe some beggars that I know about. Hey, did you saw someone? I'm tossing him a Louis. Someone did it with the blue dress. Someone may may have walked in a strange fashion. And tell me the truth. I have empathy. Lots of it. <laughs> so other than a blue dress what person do you describe because he will have seen several people in a blue dress and how could he know maybe well maybe walking strange foreign person while well, walking strangely maybe a woman maybe spanish you know brown little more brownish colored her skin he desperately wants the louis and you can see that he's he's trying to construct a lie. No, 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 no. If you don't know, I'll pass to the other one. And a, a homeless woman in, in rags. It wasn't obvious at first that, that it was a woman. A horrible, diseased, misshapen face, right? Yeah. One missing leg. Okay. She's the red-haired woman. I guess so. And I'm having the Louis. Where? Is, was the dress her dress? No. I saw the woman. Where? And you'll never guess where she went. Is it right now? I'm not you to know. If you bring him, me to her, I will give you two Louis, but not before. One Louis, then. And she's indicating mm -hmm. that she only has one leg. <laughs> I know. One, but one Louis for directions. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you won't win this. She, was, she went. 
into the sewer. The catacombs. Where is Philip? <laughs> to the catacombs. Are you afraid to go down there, Musketeer? She cackles. <laughs> and you? Of course I'm afraid to go down there. What do you think? I'm an idiot? Take the Louise. I'm tossing it at her catacombs. The catacombs. Thank you, Musketeer. Thank you for your generosity, Musketeer. Thank you so much. I'm in a good mood. Thank you. Ah. Kiss, kiss for good luck? <laughs> ah, no, not today. I'll come back tomorrow for it. If I'm oh, still alive. But you're, but you're so handsome and charming. I know. An old lady like me doesn't have much sunshine in her life. Oh, you must. I guess you were quite beautiful in your past. What happened to your leg? It was torn off by a dog. I what? can tell you the story. No, not now. Searching for <laughs> Spanish spies. And the kiss. Give it to that man. And I'm waiting the other beggar who wanted to lie. <laughs> I'm sorry for teasing you, Musketeer. You just remind me of, of my boy. Good luck in your quest. All right, the sewers, the sewers. And I'm trying to find a place to enter a sewer, the nearest one. I tried to spot the guy I sent on the roof. Hey, you! <laughs> I have a mission. <laughs> now, she, she had pointed, right? She had seen the person with with the red hair with a blue dress that didn't fit her who went down the sewers just over there so into the catacombs and yes the man on the roof is like what sewers go get the friend at the sand he must be fishing what? go stop in <laughs> go go stop he must stop I can't, fishing. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so he smartens up and he comes down and he receives his orders and he goes to get the man at the river and uh, there are no swear words that he can possibly teach you <laughs> however <laughs> he tries <laughs> All right. we're the same rank you know <laughs> Oui, mais c'est moi qui est en charge. I am in charge. <laughs> yeah, do you, you want to contradict Mr. De Trevi? I'm in charge because, yes, I'm the one in charge. <laughs> <laughs> he trusts me. Uh, we have to get to the sewer to see what's going on. I don't feel... Uh, okay, yeah. Go get some lanterns. I'll try to, to, uh, to, to, to check out what's going on in the catacombs. Right on. So we'll cut back to Philippe and Jean Marie. <laughs> churchyard. Now, this is a very large, a large church, not a cathedral like Notre Dame, but, but large and well attended. The grounds are, are taken care of well, and the, you know, the grave markers are well spaced and, and well tended which makes it a place which is very convenient for a duel. It's behind the church, uh, slightly set back from the road. It's, it's from the street. If it were quiet, you might be able to hear the, the clashing of blades, uh, but it's a, a mostly private place. Now, anybody looking for a duelist would go here first. Right? Uh, but, uh, but otherwise, you'll have, you'll have privacy. Do you show up on time? Oh, on time, uh, loudly, just full of full of uh, full of enthusiasm for this. Because uh, and, right. and probably most of, most of the bottle is gone at this point, as Philippe tries to to uh, drown the memory of what he saw last night. Oh, so you're engaging was... in drunkenness, are you? 
not drunkenness, just tipsy, just a little bit. Nice. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm gonna steal this bottle. Like you, you, you want to do this right. You want to do this in one strike. Yeah, one strike. Okay. Just... And you think you you one think strike. you think you think the wine will help? Yeah, that that's your Garand Renoir strategy. <laughs> It works for Jacques, but uh, yeah, not so. <laughs> so, why are you drinking? Oh, is it because I'm of the sure girl? I'll... It's because of the girl. Well, now I take out the lock. Take out the lock of her hair for a second. I leave the bottle here. Here. Now, your 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 sword is your life. This is more important. You will focus your entire being into this blade. You will drive it into the other guy, and now we'll leave after that, okay? <laughs> now, try not to... Give me your Kazakh. You will, you will, you will... Oh, no, you, we don't have time for the Kazakh. Just, just go for the guy. All right. Is, is he here? Yes. So, across the, the well-kept grounds of the cemetery, and there's morning mist about ankle high is rolling across the grounds it's october you know so as the sun's coming up there's this ground fog and as you move through it it swirls behind you and you can hear the crunching of some dry leaves under your feet the the rustle of wetter leaves as well the the cemetery from the other side of the Cemetery comes the other party, the man and his second. Now, from Jean-Marie, I would request a perception roll, please. The difficulty is three, so it's going to be quite... A blue one and a red one. Ooh. Two, zero, so grand total of zero. All right, so with... I'm probably too busy looking at the far away, just imagining myself like being already done with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, al although the perception check was a failure, it wasn't such a dramatic failure that I, I won't avoid telling you this. There's something about the opponent that is familiar but that's all i'll tell you now philippe you recognize your opponent have, you know having met him <laughs> his name escapes sure. escapes you but uh, but that's definitely the man who, who challenged you but you also recognize the second and that's a bit of a shock because that is pierre Yeah, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And then he kind of zips it because he's supposed to be the second, right? You know this guy? He's strangely familiar. Oh, yes. Maybe we uh, can talk this out. Yeah. There's something ridiculous. of a family resemblance between Pierre and and your opponent. Mm -hmm. I will not kill him then. I like the boy. Bonjour, monsieur. I am a coward, and this is my friend, a thief, and I am here to accept your challenge to a duel. Do I, do I remember correctly? We are cowards and thieves, right? Are we not? Yes, exactly. His, the man speaks with a very cultured accent from somewhere in the south of France. And he smiles. He's got rings on his fingers. His clothes are and so expensive. And he says, as the challenged, you may choose your weapon. Sword, or if you're not convinced of your skill, the pistol. Oh, no, I prefer the sword. I'm sure I prefer the sword. Of course. So he turns to a second to to you know inspect his choice of blades. 
uh, and choose one suitable for fighting you. I'm just patting <laughs> Philippe on the shoulder. Remember, you want to impress me? <laughs> okay, and I'm looking, I'm watching the procession as he's having his, his second, you know, looking for the right sword and everything. So I, I kind of pull out my rapier and give it to uh, give it to Jean Marie. What do you think? <laughs> I think it's a little bit heavy on the handle. Maybe you should uh, sharpen it a little more. But yes, it's fine. But uh, now is your time to show me all that whoosh whoosh in the salon, you know, training all days to perfect your technique. Now is the time to show me if it's really worth it. Maybe, maybe I even will show up to the salon if you do, if, if you do good, if you change my mind about these silly things. Yes, yes. you know what to really. go up to the salon and practicing all day does? Do you want to know? At this point, I'm just completely ignoring my opponent at this point. Do you, <laughs> want, you, know what you want to know? Does it help? It yeah. makes you Does it help? It makes you smile every once in a while. Werewolf and <laughs> it makes you smile every once in a while, you miserable bastard. <laughs> light enough. And I slap him on the shoulders. Light enough. One move. Well, I can't be light enough because you're you're bugging me with your stupid duels. <laughs> so, so the young second, the, the, the teenager, the young second comes over uh, to speak to Jean Marie. Uh, you know, he he bows politely oh. and uh, says, "So, if I understand correctly, yeah, we're uh, kind of in a, a hurry. Yeah, oh, so this this is a, <laughs> this is a a duel." To the defeat, not to the death. Yeah, yeah. For first blood, even. Very good. Agree, agree. Top it up. And I shake. And they shakes your hand. He's got a good firm grip. This lad, strong eye. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, he go he goes back to his uh, to his man and uh, whispers to him and man nods and moves into the on guard position and the second clears away. All right. So you have a nice gentlemen. long piece between rows of grave markers. All right, gentlemen. Excellent. When you will. All right. Initiative. All right. Ah, two. Aha. Uh -huh. Your opponent is faster than you. And he waits to receive you. He's holding his action. He waits to receive me. Well, not wanting to disappoint Jean Marie, I jump onto the nearest, uh, largest uh, gravestone I possibly can. It's down there. Welcome. <laughs> so, so, now so, I'm top, I'm top of a grave marker, waiting. I'm shaking my so, head like, God damn it. <laughs> he's clearly accepting, like, you know, the, the opponent is clearly expecting. To just move back and forth like in a fencing match along this this strip of grass between grave markers. So he's he's standing there, and you leap off to the side onto a grave marker, and he just pauses for a second, and then slowly looks up at you like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and then kind of accepts it in the French way, like eh, "C'est la vie," and attacks, targeting your ankles. Excellent. So I'm going to roll this because I'm taking a, a a a big chunk out of his pool to do the cold shot. Six. I have six. <laughs> so I leap attacking. over the blade. Beautiful. How? Like just leap or some somersault or what's going on? Uh, I leap over the blade. I come back down right on the gravestone and said, excellent, do it again, do it again. 
<laughs> we are playing jump rope. Now, Philippe, someone is standing next to Jean Marie, a boy, a young boy. Do you hold your attack or and wait for him to attack you again? No, no. I'm going to attack. I'm going to go right, right to an attack with a slash. With, oh, with eight successes. Ooh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's distressing. Okay, so he does get his blade up, uh, but he's he's clearly not used to actually fencing for real. So it's a textbook movement, right? It perfectly moves into position to to block <laughs> the the attack that you've made, but there's no strength in it. So five of your successes are not deflected. And you very obviously leave a very big slash across the front of his very, very expensive shirt, winning the duel in one move, as you were instructed, if he surrenders. And there's a tug on Jean-Marie's sleeve. Mm. And a thin, thin voice says, Papa... I'm still waiting. I'll turn around and get lower to look at the boys. What are you doing up this late, boy? As you get low to look in the boy's eyes, you recognize the eyes of your wife and your own face, younger your boy, and you also see that you are seeing through the boy. He's not fully here. It's Papa. I'm tired. I'll close my eyes and start praying. This is not my boy. This is not my boy. But the Père qui est aux cieux. I'm still having this, these witches in mind. They have done something to me, so I'm trying as hard as I can to cast them away from my mind. I try all my hardest. In fact, I'll take a dagger to my, my palm to inflict pain, to focus on the pain and remember the werewolf and the murder and the vow and I'm trying to cast them out with anger. Awesome. Three style for that beautiful thing. Oh, thanks. And as your mind clears, one inescapable fact comes to you. Two inescapable facts that link together. One is today's date. Today, or tomorrow, is the day of all saints. Tonight or today is the day when those souls trapped between heaven and hell can wander free. And you are on holy ground. No witch's influence is responsible for this. I will then open my eyes is the boy still there? He is not, but the scent of his hair is. I will fall to my knee, tears rolling down my cheeks, and I will scream, Jean-Baptiste! Which completely interrupts the duel. The duelist drops his guard, blood across his shirt, looks over at Jean-Marie, 
looks back at Philippe says, you have the rudest second I have ever seen. It cannot be helped. It cannot be helped. <laughs> do you concede? I'm looking at him I from the very soon. He says, no. I do not. And he extends into a lunge. Oh. Oh. Can I shoot the guy? <laughs> actually, now you're, you're actually allowed to. Uh, <laughs> seven. Seven? Seven successes with the lunge. Okay, oh, only six. Only six. Okay. And the shot. Um, I know my firearm skill, but I don't have the stats for a pistol nearby. For pistol three. Three. Three? Okay. Um, I would take a penalty to not very look at him, you know, because okay. I'm kind of doing my angst. Right. He's thing. not really <laughs> trying to shoot. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Could could you aim, please? Could you aim for the bad guy? <laughs> we have to have a scene where we shoot around Philippe in every session that I run. Every single <laughs> yep. one. Yep. <laughs> it's a tradition. So I'll take how much penalty <laughs> to the dice. Two. Two. Okay, I'll remove two. Uh, three successes. Right on. All right, so here's how things take shape. You ask him if he's going to concede. He considers it, but then his face grows dark, and he extends into the lunge saying, I do not, right, trying to do a sneak attack. Uh, because of your awkward position on the gravestone, it's a little difficult to defend yourself. But his own face is distorted by, by pain from your wound as he extends, right? So he goes into the lunch, just barely scraping across your ribs. It's it's a painful cut, but it's not life-threatening. You won't even notice you're such a hard ass. Ah. And then the shot echoes out from the direction of Jean-Marie. He's not even really looking, just he just fires. <laughs> yes. Hitting the uh, your opponent in the upper arm, right? And he cries out in pain. And he drops down. And he's like, "Enough, enough!" I surrender. He drops his sword, changing from bravado to coward in the flash of gunpowder. And Pierre's face is one of disgust. Turn back and show Are you crazy? It shouldn't be again. I'm on the ground like, <laughs> my son, I will avenge you. Oh, my God. He's having one of those again. I promised. I made a promise, Philippe. Do you understand? Those petty things, those duels mean nothing to me. Honor, it means nothing to me. There's evil in the world. It's working right now. Do you realize? Oh. We are not. We are not walking the same path. So on your knees, next to this grave marker, you see the wet imprint of a little boy's hand, as if it's holding the name that is carved. It's Beauvais. 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 And you hear the boy's voice saying, Papa, I'm tired. I know my son soon. Very soon, I promise. I'm there. Don't give up. Pierre comes forward to Philippe. He apologizes for his cousin. 
and moves to guide the man away, advising you both to flee because the Cardinal's guards were supposed to be here to stop this duel. But they seem to be late. Uh, see that he gets see that he gets uh, medical attention. We will speak of this later. I do not understand. Today has been very confusing. I'm sorry. And he guides his cousin away who's cursing and uh, and I walk back over to Jean Marie. What did you see? What happened? And I tell him flatly, I saw the ghost of my son pleading because he's tired of waiting in the afterlife. He's stuck there. He cannot go to heaven. And I'm there. I could as well take a swim in the Seine or play the violin. I'm here with you playing a second. It's a game. It's a game. It's a game to you, Philippe. Those pity, honored things. You spilled what on this guy's shirt? Wine, marmalade, bread, and now there is blood on his shirt. Which one is better, don't you think? Well, actually, technically, he spilled wine on my shirt, but I don't know. It's The man insulted me. What was I supposed to do? Grow up. <laughs> uh, let's go. And I just sheathe my, clean my rapier, sheathe my rapier, and just start walking. I don't even look back. Leaving the churchyard, memories of home, surface of course in Jean Marie of Orléans and of Emily they are wealthy they are maybe a little sick as a family very private they cover up their sins with money I wonder if it's connected to the current affair. Are we by any chance up north? Uh, I mean, I don't know. No, I don't get it. Well, we, we, we were supposed to visit this white horse house in the north of Paris, and we're, okay. it seems to be uh, out, in the outskirts of the city. So I was wondering if we were by any chance north. Oh, I see. No, you've, you've moved in the opposite direction toward the, okay. to the south gate of the city. Okay, okay. And uh, if anybody would, would easily know where the white horse is, it would of course be Alphonse. Uh -huh. Yeah. Philippe. Philippe. Yes. We, we, we'll need we'll need Alphonse. I just I just want to to apologize to you if I said anything hard. In a way, you remind me of my son of what he could have been at your age so you must you must forgive me sometimes if i don't see you as a as a brother in harm and, and as something else all i wanted to say is that now not all wrong must be avenged to the fullest with all force It is okay. 
you should keep your strength for when it matter really you were a wise man it, it is okay it has been a hard day it has been a hard day let us let's go find breeze score yes let's do that let's serve friends that makes us better and I look, I look sad all of a sudden. I just, think, I just, I just say for France, for France, for France. Uh, yeah, give me the wine. <laughs> <laughs> give him the wine. <laughs> I remember. I, re I remember. Just, I just keep, keep saying that under my breath. I remember what that woman said. For France. That's what she said. So I'll do a quick wipe through time. You find each other. You come together. You seek out the white horse or the ruins of the white horse. Now, interestingly, Jean-Marie, not too many weeks ago, you had a terrible struggle with a witch in the catacombs uh, beneath this part of town, and then came up and met more witches in, ah. in this general area. This devastated, poor, part of Paris where as many buildings are falling down as are standing up. This is the part of Paris north or northwest of the of the northeast of the palace. Uh, so you are fairly familiar with this with this area. The tavern itself burned down. Alphonse, you remember stories from a time uh, when this place burned down. It was rumored that that two musketeers had burned it down. Right. The only name you remember is a, a Jean Archer. Right. Okay. Well, that, that, that is quite a strange story indeed. So you brought me here for why? I was about to go into the catacombs. Catacombs? I have never been in the catacombs. No, well, I was about to close this affair. Well, we went to the Coq Santite and we we found information that the people who hired these poor fellow uh, meets probably in these in these parts. And I must say, and I spray some holy water on the guys. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I've been I've been here a few weeks back, and uh, it's not it's not have been the best night of my life. Oh, to uh, to make a short story, I killed a witch and met with her two acolyte sister, mother superior, whatever. There's two more in these parts. So if you feel anything strange, if you hear voices, see something strange, stay focused. Yeah, try to invoke the name of the lords and, and recite prayers in your head as it happens. Just do it. Don't ask why. Just to give you strength. <laughs> oh, okay. No problems. Anyway, with, stay with, very with, alert. Stay I very am. alert. The White Horse had three buildings, all of which have burned down to varying degrees. The main tavern inn building, which had two floors, it had a one floor main uh, tavern area and then a two story kind of hotel inn area. Behind that was a stable for, for horses or for merchants to put their uh, put their goods in, under lock and key. And it had a third building built around its well. And that has all burned down. You can see the well and the large stone base around it. And Alphonse, who's been considering going down into the catacombs, this well uh, is very close to the line of of gratings that cover over the sewer. Right. Whatever water this well goes down to is is next to or close to uh, one of the tunnels for 
the catacombs. A little suspicious. The way that the these three buildings are arranged is standing on the road is first the building for the well and then the main building for the inn and then behind that the larger kind of bulkier building for the, the barn or stable. Now apparently when this place burned down it was filled with with local townspeople, people from the from the area around it who had been who had been kidnapped by this group of, of devil worshippers. And they had been freed and they told the story of the bravery of the musketeers who freed them. But as far as they knew, the musketeers were lost in the fire along with the leader of the cult. Okay, the Kanagons, I, well, I've heard that I, I was, okay, just to tell you, I was following someone in the the, the palace, okay, who has uh, stolen a dress, was bleeding, and it led us to, well, to the sewers, the catacombs. That's mm -hmm. where I was about to go. So, so that's why you're late to you. You weren't you weren't slacking this time. <laughs> no, 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 no. That this time, no, no. It's time for duty. So, uh, where do we start? We, I think, we should go down immediately. Maybe I, I know what we see. Maybe I know Stop. a way to how to enter the catacombs. I'll try to use my my knowledge of the lay of the land. Lay of the land. Try to, try to find an entrance. Well, Wait there are minute. some. Yes, fleet. So you bring me to the uh, the cock sense that. Now you bring me here. I must say, Jean-Marie, you have an excellent taste in showing me these sights of Paris. <laughs> and so you, you were killed killed a witch and then almost died in the catacombs. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And then you, Chris. Briscoe, you say this this person has escaped and gone into the catacombs. Yeah. But you, not so long ago, you told me the story of going in the catacombs, chasing chasing oh. a murderer. I almost died. Yeah, yeah. This this is it. This is the spot. Yeah. 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 So it sounds incredibly dangerous and like a bad idea. Let's yeah, do it. That's, that's how you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bad okay. ideas are our this duty. Will, this will be great. Style. I just want to style make sure for everyone. One style for everyone. One style. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll place my sword on the ground and say Alpha One. Alpha Alpha one. Sure, yeah. that's where we're all. Now we're good tired. to go. <laughs> <laughs> so Nothing can hurt us now. Moving through, moving through the wreckage of of the old white horse. The only thing that really still stands out is the the mosaic tile floor of the, the tavern room. Mm. Uh, it's all burned and covered in, in garbage, but you can see that the the reason why the the tavern had this name in the first place is that it had this horse's head pattern in its floor. But as you move through the area, it becomes more and more obvious that the only way down has to be either through the well itself or through some other other access point near it. Or you can retreat a couple of streets to a more familiar uh, sewer grating that uh, Jean-Marie has already used. Oh, well, I, I, I'm a... Uh, well, I... I might want to get in there. Everything needs, you know, you, you were led to this place. And in some way, I was led to go down. So, yeah, we have everything we need. Let's oh, cool. clear Alphonse this. Has collected has collected light. <laughs> yes, 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 I have. Good. Do you have so a rope? I, or are we going to jump? A rope. Do I have a rope? <laughs> uh, well, 
<laughs> Most <laughs> access points down into the sewer have iron rungs in the stone. Yeah, yeah, that's oh. not, yeah you guys don't know sewers. <laughs> It is. It is my first time. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll okay, lead the uh, way. I'll go first. Yeah, and okay. I try to light up the the place, the well. Which uh, ex which access point do you you're gonna use the well? Yeah, yeah let's go okay. with the well. So the well is of course dry, and there are iron rungs down its inner face, down to a an iron bottom. It has a the bottom of the well is an iron sheet, which, of course, has a door at the bottom, a secret access point, hmm. covered in mold and slime and, and whatnot, but easy enough to uncover, thanks to Alphonse's light. I can uh, maybe use my, my tracking sense to look at the mold. Yeah. As the door I've been moved recently. Or... It has. Someone, someone who yeah. knew it was there. Yeah. You guys have made a huge mess of it, but. Yeah. Okay. Me and Briska will, will open this thing. Well, okay. Well, Philip can help too. I will hold the light. <laughs> all right, all right, you dandy. <laughs> who will kill, who will kill whatever comes outside? Okay, I'll help. Help me, Philly. All right. Now you'd expect yes, a, a wet, damp iron door like this to creak or shriek with rust, but no, it has its hinges have been well oiled and it comes up smoothly and silently. Although it comes up with a terrible smell from below. Oh. Oh, you can hear the sound of running water. Okay, I'm uh, approaching the light to see more clearly. Okay. Now, down below, you can see a thin trickle of water, which has kind of cut a small channel in the hard floor of the catacombs below. But you can't see the walls from above. You won't be able to see them until you get down into the tunnel. I'm going in. Yeah. I'm going down. I'll take the the first iron rod and try to lower myself as prudently as I can. Well, the iron bars of the of the ladder are uh, quite safe, very clean, very firm. <coughs> and at the base of the ladder, there's a large like stone block to stand on above what looks like a changing level of water. You know, if it rains or or whatnot. There's not much water down here right now, although it has been raining a lot recently. It's cold and damp, and like I say, there's a terrible smell of rot down here. The walls are what look like human thigh bones, all arranged. Okay. Yeah, it's oh. a catacomb. It's a catacomb, all right. I follow him right down. I said, this looks like your kind of place, somebody. Yeah. Oh, it's very romantic. I'm uh, I'm lighting the wall, getting nearer to them to see if something unusual can be spotted. Yeah, if something happens, remember, we need to protect that light. <laughs> good point, okay. good point. So... You've Four. got a very difficult decision to make. Left, according with your back to the ladder. Left or right? I'll, uh, I'll inspect the, the water. Is, the water is flowing to your left. Okay, I'll inspect the the floor, the walls, ceilings. I'll I'll inspect like at twenty feet from each okay. side. Before making this would be a great time for a tracking roll. Yeah. <laughs> Bring the lights. If you if you're gonna yes. take extra time, 
If you're going to take extra time, you can have extra dice. We are not very in a hurry. Well, okay. So Give yourself two additional dice. Yeah. I was about to Restart. say like five minutes, maybe. Sure. Okay. Uh, one success. Okay. I can't say that you have a lot of confidence in your decision, but if you had to make a choice, it looks like going to the right makes the most sense. There's, there is the disturbance in the, the mold and slime and other disgusting stuff down here that suggests somebody went that way. Would that direction would bring us closer to the white horse if I try to remember how I came in and pass under the white horse and you'd be pass you'd be moving away from the river. All right, I think it's the right this way. All okay. right. I'm putting myself between you the two of you just because of the light. Because I could lead the way. No. <laughs> not because you know. it's the safest place. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not a coward. You don't have, you don't have to Stop huddling around the light. Stop huddling around the light. I can't see back here. <laughs> you don't have to make excuses. So who, who's leading? I, I'm leading the way. jean -Marie. All right, so jean -Marie, your shadow is stretching ahead of you down through the, the catacomb. And uh, Alphonse, you know, most of what you see is Jean-Marie. Yeah. And uh, Philippe, you're mostly blinded by the lantern. Yeah. I'm trying to get past Alphonse because I want to be near the front, but somehow Alphonse won't let me. He somehow wants to be behind him the entire time. <laughs> so he, if I go left, he goes left. I go right, he goes right. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, stay behind. That's the official story be... from, from Philippe. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get past him, but I couldn't. <laughs> he was too flamboyant. He was taking to the space. <laughs> okay. Now, after you go maybe 30, 40 meters through this disgusting slop, you have another choice to make. Another choice of straight or left or right. But this time, Alphonse, you can hear what sounds like the voice of a woman, very low, like uh, like a private argument. Okay. Uh, I'll cover the light and stay close. Just listen. Now that everybody is concentrating, it, it, you are certain. The echo makes it hard to tell if it's coming from ahead or to the right. But there is a conversation. One part of the conversation, one person is upset. And the other person is is begging or pleading or asking for something. It's that tone, you know, words. They're lost in the echoes. It's too far away. We have to close to those uh talking I'll, persons. I'll make a gesture to do silence. I'll point places on the ground where to put your foot. And I'll just motion like this. And I'll go into a full stealth mode. Uh, I, 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 I'll help them uh, to uh, to their to, to being more subtle and and more uh, stealthy. Yeah, I'm stealthy. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm a pretty good. You're not in a rush, are you? No. No, no. We okay. take our time. The idea is to spy okay, on them. Believe. Yeah. Step by step, you move down through the catacombs. The walls of the catacombs change from thigh bones to upper arm bones, okay, so shorter. And 
you realize after a few steps that you've made the right decision. As soon as you get away from this intersection and start going down the right tunnel. Yes, it is very humorous. <laughs> the humorous is humorous. So, the word humorous interferes with the scary mood, man. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, as you creep forward, the the sound and the echoes, they refine, still echoing, still distorted. Definitely now a man's voice and a woman's voice. The man is angry. The woman is asking for something, maybe forgiveness, maybe for a second chance. But then very clearly, the woman's voice no longer whispered, but stated says, but I want to live. And the man's voice is, you don't deserve to live. Hmm. Oh, well, whatever they are, they are on the wrong place. In the catacombs is not a good place to have a coupled argument. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? We enter and we rush and rush. I just turn around and I. If they kill each other, I'm fine with this. But I'm, I'm turning around with, <laughs> to see <laughs> to see if my oh. what my companion would like to do. And I stay silent. Okay. There's a woman in trouble. Woman, well, okay. We have to see, but we have to. Uh, well, if they can lead us to the family members of the two servants, well. It's our only chance. Okay, I can. Uh, I'm listening again. What they're seeing right now. So, she had, he had said, you know, you don't deserve to live. And then there's a a pause. Very low, guttural, almost inhuman kind of chant. Beginning. Oh bloody hell! <laughs> okay, that's our cue. Time. Yep, that's our cue. That's our cue. <laughs> I I hope I I well uh, I'm ready to unsheathe the light to maybe time give to bust a cultist. <laughs> okay, so there's more light. You can clearly see your footing, and you can see the the catacombs and what looked like just mold growing on the walls is actually splashes of of dried blood in all sorts of occult symbols you can see the horned head of the devil and uh, and symbols which represent eternal life i can okay uh, i know those symbols uh jean marie knows the last symbol everybody knows the the devil's head symbol I think we have found a cult, a immortality cult from, you know. Go ahead. We we, we have to deal with it. Yeah, that's so you rush forward. Yeah. Looks like the right and place. The, the tunnel gradually turns off to your left. And as you move around that that curve, more and more light is visible ahead of you, candlelight flickering, a room is ahead full of candles. You can hear this, this chant building and building in power. You can hear the woman's voice saying, no, no, I want to live. And you can hear other voices, shocked voices, but not clear as if their mouths are covered. You burst into the room. It's very, very tall, perhaps all the way up to street level. There are candelabras about this tall with a ring of five candles in a, in a pentagram shape. These are iron candelabras, and there are five of them around a center point. There's a large broken stone altar in the very middle of this round room. 
women, children are tied up against the back of the room. They're spattered in blood. They have symbols drawn on their heads. And the focal point of the room on either side of the altar, one is a man in a goat's head mask with a blazing red ring on his finger. The other side of the altar is the beautiful red hair of the Spanish spy. <laughs> uh, I'm entering. <laughs> I'm entering and waving. Uh, and T. If you do that on the street, you will win money for a scene like that. People will applaud. <laughs> what are you doing on the ground? Uh, I am going to leave Briscar disrupt his concentration. And myself, I will try to break the pen. The, the pentacle. Sure. I'll try to break break the magic circle. Like knocking over the, the candelabra kind of thing? Yep. Mess around is, is a symbol, so to screw up with his effect, whatever. <laughs> All right. So, your arrival, Breeze Coors insult, uh, interrupts the chant, and he says, No! Well, yes, 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 it will. You would make money, Louis, in doing that. <laughs> the woman turns you know that around. Costume. Yes. The woman turns around and she locks eyes with Philippe. And it is the Spanish spy. And she is very much alive. You are alive? But how? That killer That's again? Frozen. <laughs> frozen, transfixed. My rapier out. Don't you see this? Man, as her under his control and influence. I look back at him. Don't you oh. see she was dead a couple hours ago with a knife stuck in her heart? So. <laughs> the man in the goat's head sorry. mask. <laughs> the man in the goat's head mask says, Death is nothing. But look, it's the monster hunter. And his friends, the monster hunter, so brave, so sure of his ability to avenge his son, kill the werewolf that he's been hiding in Paris all these years. I draw my blade. <laughs> oh, you if know about death, it. Yes. If death is nothing, why won't you go see it for yourself? Certainly, Jean Marie. And he opens up his robe to reveal his scarred chest and on his chest is the same symbol of his mask and it's been burned in like a brand and there's a smaller symbol in the middle of the goat's forehead but you're too far away under bad lighting to see what that is says, certainly strike me down oh i will try i'm prepared to kill you as as many time as i it, it will take. Go on. And you, Alphonse, have you nothing to say? Well, the scripter of your pieces is very bad. <laughs> <laughs> your display is bad. This play is bad. How can you live a life being so mediocre? <laughs> oh. Beautiful. You wound him to the quick. Style. Too style for that. <laughs> style. <laughs> and I, at this point, I just roll my eyes. Okay. Just having given up. While <laughs> saying that, I'm going towards the, the, the kids that are tied. Yes, tied I, up. I, they're, I, they're all behind him. Yeah. I, I'm, be, I tell, I'm in front of the guy, you know, turning around, talking, and, you know, I'm getting my back towards the kids. Just in case his attention gets elsewhere, I will try to untie them. Sure. Do that's, you want to be off to his left or his right? Well, his left uh, or his right? Uh, well, I want. Yeah, I want to be on the side where the Spanish women spy can well can have the less vision of me. You know, can see me the less. Okay, then you're on his left. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, she has turned over her shoulder to 
and she's still staring at at Philippe as if something is passing between them. Mm. So uh, I, I know many scripters who can make better writings, and yeah, you would be more fearful. I no. He slams his his fist down on the altar and he says, "Enough." No, <laughs> you need practice. I'd like to and charge all lights, him. All the lights go out, including your lantern. I'm going to mm -hmm. use what I remember of the room, and I'm going to charge him. And I know there's a hotel. I, I'm just going to uh, dive above the hotel with my sword, and I'll try to ram it. To his heart. <laughs> yeah, it's dark. So I've got called shot in the declared, dark. Called shot in the dark, which horribly is minus eight. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Nothing I'm not going to problem. add the. I'm not going to add the the full darkness penalty of eight on top of the called shot penalty of eight. I'm just going to give you a penalty of eight. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So minus three. So to give me an ad, I'll need some style point. Minus three. You know what? Hmm. I'll take four to give me one dice. I'll take another one. To give me two dice. And I could maybe ask for a chance die. Yeah. Okay, let's go with two dice. Take a chance. It's it's just. Uh, nah, nah. All right. Doesn't <laughs> feel right. Okay. It's just if the guy is really truly immortal, I will have to do that again anyway. So. <laughs> right. I so because of the darkness, and yep. because of the. The cold shot, it's it's minus eight. Yep. So and I raise that by two dice. five. Yeah, I spent five. So I should have three three dice. Three dice, okay. Okay. And I forgot the damage of my sword, of course. So that's two, two more. Okay. Okay, no, I, I, I feel confident now. Okay, that's three successes. All right. Now it's it's dark, and all he's going to get yeah. of this attack is like splashing, splashing feet. Um, so he is not going to get his full defense either, unless he can see in the dark, of course. All right, you feel resistance as your blade sinks into meat, and you hear the exhalation of breath. <sighs> But maybe it's a woman's exhalation. Like I would have been stupid enough to run into the Spanish. There's no way. You knew where she was, and she was down low. Yeah, there's no way. No way. You feel arms fall across your shoulders and then slide down your chest as the body falls. What are the others of you doing in this in this moment of pure darkness with your fog swimming wow. in front of your eyes? Well, relighting the lantern. Okay. And I scream, you are a coward and a thief! <laughs> so. What is... Bring the light, put the candles back on and fight like a man, you coward. So Alphonse, you set the set the lantern down, you strike a spark, get it burning. It takes it yep. takes a few seconds, but the oil catches, and Jean Marie is laying stretched across the altar. Right. The the Spanish spy is lying in front of the altar where she was, the only difference being that she had been alive and now she's clearly dead. 
her jaws hanging open, her eyes are just staring. Jean-Marie did not hit her, did not stab her. His blade is extended. There's blood down the length of the blade. The, the captured, tied up family members are still arrayed around the back of the room, but the man in the goat's head mask is nowhere to be seen. France is in danger. It's always in danger. <laughs> With that, can reject king, can disappear. What is that? Oh, I, uh, uh, is there any other way out in this room? Not obviously. There probably is, but there's no obvious other exit. Uh, man. I take a candle on the floor, light it up with the fire of my lantern, and leave it in the room, and I go run the sewers. If you love France, come with me. Search for secret doors. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they don't love France. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I just said decisions. That decisions. It it, uh, it sounded good. On foot, on foot, in a straight line. This guy don't have a chance. He must have some way to escape. Yeah, let's search then. And I'm looking. At, well, I begin to search because I will untie those poor kids. Right. And, I and everybody's crying, and they want to be rescued. They want to be taken from this this terrible place. They're all coated in, in blood, you know, and they've been cut, and they've been told that they're going to be sacrificed, and and they just they're they're all talking at the same time. They want to get out. They want to get out. And some of them are yeah, very yeah. young. It was just a play. <laughs> it's all an act. <laughs> it's all an act. <laughs> we're just a bad. Did you enjoy actor. our performance? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure you didn't enjoy their per his performance because he was bad. That maybe that's why he's hiding under, <laughs> under like that. The woman's body is visibly rotting away. Yeah, oh, that's what happens when eternity comes out of the room. Oof. She may have died several times. She's already gone. I'm okay. Backing away so, from the so, backing away from the corpse. <laughs> Searching the room, there's not much to be found, but around the altar there are all sorts of, of small boxes and crates for different parts of magical rituals. Right. There are some things that Jean-Marie recognizes from his occult studies and things that you can just assume have some kind of occult nature, like different types of knife and bowls and powders and paints and brushes and a book and diaries, reports, and folded up letters. Uh, there is a report on one Alphonse, and one on Philippe, and one on Martin, and your lackeys, and Jean-Marie, a point form history of who you are, and several other musketeers as well. That information must have come from somewhere. I know only one place one person one person who could deliver such precise detail about us what are you thinking about and just and i'll just say this the king even don't have that much information on us he's too busy there are two pieces of information which really stand out one, that they know who Martin is. Yeah. Two, that when they describe Jean-Marie's vow to find the werewolf that slew his son, they say 
he's looking for the Bove werewolf. My son was right. I saw earlier in the night my son in the cemetery. You, you remember, Philippe? I remember. He lays he lays his hand on on a on a tombstone. A member of the Bove family. He is the one I'm looking for. Hmm. Well, they have that. They have that not, much information not on the us. dead guy, but you know, he's a Bove. I know his name. Yes, but he knows your name. Somebody knows your name. And it's Who because they, name? they are afraid of us. Yeah, we're the musketeers. I wanted to be famous, but not quite like this. Well, oh, I don't yeah. mind him knowing about me. I'm ready for him. I'm just waiting for the occasion any day. Yeah, well, let's read that on the sunlight. I have a crying family over here. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, do not, I do not think. Suppose you could hold it down. We're trying to find a clue. <laughs> and so let's bring let's bring <laughs> these people to their respective families, or rather, pater. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my young, your father is quite good at fighting with the chair. <laughs> so, as the curtain closes on this session of All for One Regime <laughs> Diabolique, the musketeers are able to guide these captured souls from out of the catacombs and return them to their worried and soul sick fathers, put them in touch with their local priest to help them pray and heal the wounds of, of horror and terror that have been inflicted upon them by this mysterious cult leader. Someone who, as Alphonse indicates, must be cautious and maybe even afraid of what you represent if they would go to such efforts to gather information about who you are. I knew it. <laughs> but as Jean-Marie also pointed out, there is really only one man in all of Paris who knows so much about so many. Only one man who has a spy network so complete that no one in France, no one in Paris believes that a secret is really a secret. The Cardinal Richelieu. So... We bid you adieu. Until next time. Yes. For France. Oh, yeah. <laughs>